One of the features of a corporation is that it issues shares of stock for ownership in the company. When a corporation is first incorporated, the Articles of Incorporation detail how many shares of stock the company is authorized to sell or issue. This is the maximum number of shares a company can sell. Once a company sells some of its stock, the stock is considered issued stock. Any stock that has been sold and is still owned by an investor is also considered outstanding stock. So why do we have issued and outstanding? Aren't they the same thing? Well, a company can actually repurchase its own stock. When this happens, this stock is called treasury stock. Treasury stock has been issued, but is no longer outstanding. Therefore, the difference between issued and outstanding stock is treasury stock. A corporation has two different types or classes of stock it can issue, common or preferred. Common stock, as its name implies, is the most common type. The state in which each corporation incorporates and files articles of incorporation set a par or stated value for each share of common stock. Originally, this amount indicated the value of the stock. However, things have changed a bit and this amount no longer has anything to do with the value of the stock and is only important for recording the sale of the stock. In fact, some states don't even issue a par or stated value. We call this no par value stock. When a company initially sells shares, it records the sale of that stock. Don't confuse this activity for stock market activity. A company only receives funds from a stock market from an initial sale, referred to as an IPO or initial public offering. Daily trading on a stock market is between investors and has no impact on the corporation. The corporation receives no funds from these transactions, nor does it record anything. When a company sells stock into the market or to an individual investor, that is when they receive funds and record the transaction. Assume a company sells 1,000 shares of $1 par common stock for $50,000. The company would record a debit to cash for $50,000. Anytime a company issues stock that has a par or stated value, this is the amount that is recorded in the common stock account. In this example, the stock has a $1 per share par. Therefore, the company would credit common stock for $1,000. The difference is the amount over par that the company received for the stock. Again, par has nothing to do with the stock's value. The amount paid over par is recorded in an account called paid in capital in excess of par. It's a long name, but it says exactly what it is. It is the amount someone invested in the company above the par amount. The company would credit paid in capital in excess of par for $49,000. What if this company was in a state that didn't issue a par or stated value for stock? If the stock was no par, then all of the amount received would be recorded in the common stock account. Cash would be debited for $50,000 and common stock would be credited for $50,000. Companies can pay dividends to their shareholders. These, however, are not required to be paid. Dividends are the company's way of sharing their profits with their investors. The company's done well and want to share the wealth, so to speak, with the stockholders. Dividends are usually paid in cash, but can also be in the form of additional shares of stock or even other assets. There are three important dates related to dividends. The first date is the date of declaration. This is the day that the board of directors declares their intention to pay a dividend and how much it will be. The second date is the date of record. The company needs to know which stockholders own stock in their company and how much on this date. These stockholders will get the dividend when it's paid. The third date is the date of payment. This is when the company actually pays the dividend. Assume a company declares a cash dividend on August the 5th of $3 per share to be paid on September the 5th for all shareholders on record as of August the 31st. The number of shares outstanding are 100,000. August 5th is the date of declaration. The company would record a debit to the dividends account for $300,000 and a credit to dividends payable for $300,000. August the 31st is the date of record. There's no journal entry on this date. 
The company needs to have a record of who owns the stock and how many shares, but no journal entry is made. September 5th is the date of payment. The company would record a debit to dividends payable for $300,000 and a credit to cash for $300,000. Common stock really isn't so common after all.